dear students and learners welcome to the elective course on instrumentation methods of chemical analysis and to the module on potentiometry this is the continuation of my previous lecture on electrochemistry and its uh, basic principles and it and in this module we will try to understand what is potentiometry what is potentiometer what kind of uh, information that we get out of these uh, potentiometric measurements and uh, what kind of electrode that we use it for various uh, n light uh, recognition and so on so all my previous lecture uh, i have discussed the uh, classification of various uh, uh, electroanalytical methods and broadly they are divided into two one is interfacial electrochemical methods and other one is the bulk methods so within uh, interfacial method interfacial electrochemical methods we have again there are two categories one is static method the other one is a dynamic electrochemical methods so these uh, broad classification is again based on the current in the cell and if the current in the cell is zero then we say uh, it is a static method and if the current is non zero then we say it is a dynamic method so the potentiometry which we are going to discuss in this module comes under static method so what is potentiometry potentiometry is all about measuring the potential of a electrochemical cell without drawing appreciable current this is very very important point one has to remember and potentiometer is a device used for measuring the potential of a electrochemical cell without drawing current or altering the cell composition generally a very high impedance or resistance voltmeter is used for this purpose please note that impedance and resistance both are uh, the same concepts in potentiometric measurements are made using a potentiometer to determine the difference in potential between a working electrode and a counter electrode please note that working electrode is also referred to as indicator electrode and the counter electrode is also referred to as reference electrode this is the cell representation as you can see here on the left hand side there is a reference electrode on the right hand side there is a indicator electrode and both are separated by a salt bridge and all these three components are uh, placed in analyte solution or target solution which you would like to determine the potential this is a schematic representation of a potentiometer as you can see in the diagram uh, there are two electrodes uh, reference electrode on the left hand side and there is a indicator electrode or the working electrode on the right hand side both are placed in a analyte solution and both are separated by a small uh, a salt bridge and both these electrodes are connected to a digital voltmeter and the cell potential is is nothing but the difference between the working electrode or the indicator electrode uh, and the reference electrode since we are using a salt bridge and uh, its uh, junction potential is also taken into the account and this cell poten uh, potential is not so different what we have discussed in the last uh, class generally we write cell potential is equal to uh, right hand the uh, right hand side potential minus left hand side potential but since we are having a junction so the junction potential also has to be taken into the consideration for uh, more accurate quantitative measurements in potentiometry cathode is a working electrode or indicator electrode it is generally placed on the right hand side and uh, anode is the uh, counter electrode or reference electrode it is generally placed on the left hand side and uh, reference electrode this is something that we have discussed in the last class this is also called as a standard electrode or reference electrode and uh, it anything that you can consider as a reference electrode whose uh, potential is exactly and precisely known and uh, it is independent of the concentration of analyte or any other ions in the solution that you are studying similarly indicator electrode 
is generally immersed in a NLight solution and this also develop a potential and uh, it is abbreviated as E indicator. Generally it depends upon the activity of the analyte and uh, these uh, indicate, uh, indicator electrode can be classified uh, uh, broadly into two. There can be a specific indicator electrode and there can be selective indicator electrodes. The net potential difference across the salt bridge is abbreviated with EJ. It is typically of the order of few millivolts or in other words it is very less. So in majority of the measurements normally we neglect this uh, quantity but if you are really interested in uh, accurate measurement it has to be taken into the consideration. What we do exactly in potentiometry and what for we do potentiometry. Measuring the concentration of an analyte in an unknown solution is the ultimate goal of any potentiometric analysis. So to make a potentiometric determination of any analyte uh, or uh, which is present in an unknown solution, first we must measure the cell potential and correct the potential for uh, reference and junction potential and compute the analyte concentration uh, by calculating the indicator electrode potential. Through proper calibration of the electrode system with solutions of known concentrations, we can determine the concentration of the analyte. But how do we exactly do this? Because we know that the electrochemical cell potential is related to the activity or uh, concentration. The cell potential is this and uh, activities and it's uh, the cell potential is actually related with the Nernst equation. In the Nernst equation we can find the activities of uh, the products and reactants. So on the right hand side we have the reactants and uh, products uh, concentration or activities and these are the uh, constant numbers and this is something that we are going to estimate uh, or measure using the uh, potentiometric measure, uh, measurements. So, so these are the things that we don't know, but rest, these are the things that we don't know, uh, but rest of the things are known. So it is straightforward that we can uh, compute the activities or the concentration of the analyte uh, solution in the unknown solution. Having understood what is potentiometry, let us try to look into the basic components of of a simple potentiometer. So potentiometer will have a reference electrode whose uh, potential is precisely known and it gives a constant potential throughout the measurement and there is indicator electrode uh, where species concentration of the interest is to be measured and uh, we uh, this is actually uh, sensitive to the analyte uh, concentration and uh, there is a salt bridge uh, this separates the working electrode and the reference electrode and there is a uh, potential measuring device so generally it is a high impedance voltmeter or a high resistance uh, voltmeter. Since we have discussed uh, in the last class a reference electrode uh, uh, we, we shall confine our discussion to only the indicator electrode and uh, uh, the rest of the things there is nothing much that we can discuss. So indicator electrodes there are several indicator electrode which are actually uh, either specific or uh, uh, selective. So, for a analyte uh, perspective, uh, analyst uh, perspective, so one has to understand how one can actually uh, devise their own indicator electrode to estimate or to measure the uh, concentration of a unknown analyte present in a uh, solution. Discussing indicator electrodes in detail, let us. Uh, try to understand what are the different types of electrodes uh, in a broader perspective. And the electrodes are broadly uh, two types, one is a reference electrode and the other one is indicator electrode or working electrode. And the reference electrodes are, uh, we have uh, standard hydrogen electrode or normal hydrogen electrode and uh, silver, uh, silver chloride uh, uh, reference electrode and calomel electrode. And the indicator electrodes are again classified into two. One is a metallic indicator electrode, the other one is membrane or ion selective indicator uh, electrodes. 
and the metallic indicator electrodes are further divided into four categories first kind second kind third kind and redox kind and all these metallic indicator electrode are said to be very specific to a specific analyte and membrane uh, electrodes are again classified into two depending upon the material that you are using as the membrane when you use a crystalline material so they, we say it is a crystalline indicator electrode and if you are using a non crystalline or amorphous uh, material uh, then we say it is a non crystalline membrane or ion selective indicator electrode so the crystalline one again uh, we have single crystalline and we have polycrystalline and uh, single crystalline electrode uh, lanthanum fluoride generally used for fluoride ion detection so uh, lanthanum fluoride is a crystal so we can uh, device or we can uh, fabricate uh, indicator electrode for detecting the fluoride ion of this crystal and silver uh, sulfide is a polycrystalline material we can devise this for uh, estimating the silver ion percent silver and uh, sulfide ion percent in a unknown solution and the non crystalline uh, membrane uh, or ion selective uh, indicator electrodes are again classified and there are several types uh, if you are using glass as the membrane typically a silica glass can be used for detecting the sodium ion or H plus ion concentration this is something that we will discuss uh, quite elaboratively in this module and uh, a liquid can be used as a membrane electrode and uh, there are several uh, uh, liquid based uh, membrane electrodes, uh, electrodes are available so the best example is ion exchanger for uh, calcium ion concentration similarly you can immobilize a liquid and which you can uh, use it uh, uh, as a electrode so the best example is that uh, you can immobilize on a PVC mattress some liquid which is actually selectively sensitive to the calcium ions and the nitrate ions we will try to understand metallic indicators as well as uh, membrane indicators or uh, ion selective indicators. Mm, as I mentioned that there are four different kinds of metallic indicators are there, first kind, second kind, third kind and redox kind. First kind metallic indicator, a pure metal electrode in direct equilibrium with its uh, cation in solution and respond directly to the activity of electrode ion. Which means is that suppose if you have a if you want to develop a copper metallic indicator electrode uh, and then take a copper rod and uh, immerse in the copper solution so this is the redox reaction that takes place and uh, we can apply the Nernst equation to this uh, redox reaction and uh, it comes like this here as you can see that the log 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 of one by activity of copper two plus ion. Please note that here it is supposed to be activity of copper being the product. But we know that uh, activities of metals is taken to be one. Therefore, it is one. Okay. Now, like uh, we can slightly modify this expression and uh, write it something like this. And uh, this E zero Cu two plus. This is the standard redox uh, potential uh, which we can obtain from the electrochemical series. Now, this log, log of 1 over uh, activity of copper 2 plus ion can be written as PCU. So, PCU actually is uh, inspired from the word pH, the negative ion concentration of the negative logarithmic. Uh, concentration of H plus ion is referred to as a pH. Likewise, a PCU represents the negative logarithmic value of copper 2 plus ion activity. So, this uh, electrode is found to be very simple, um, but it has uh, and then it is slightly inexpensive, but it has certain disadvantages. Uh, uh, like, you know, it is very selective or uh, very much uh, selective or it is only uh, 
sends a, a particular uh, metal ion. So copper metallic indicator can be used only to detect the copper ions, not for the other uh, metal, metal ions. And uh, it, since uh, we are using metals, uh, we cannot use uh, any acidic solutions. Uh, for example, zinc and cadmium electrodes cannot be placed in acid, uh, acid solutions, so they will only work in neutral solutions. And uh, again, another problem is that uh, since we are using metal rod immersed in the solution, and uh, so metals actually prone to uh, react with uh, atmosphere, uh, atmosphere oxygen, and then therefore we have to maintain a condition that uh, deaerated solutions. So this is another uh, limitation of this uh, metallic indicator. And then many a times we also find this uh, this uh, reproducibility issues, especially with the uh, iron. Uh, chromium, cobalt and nickel. The drawback is that there is a huge difference bet between experimentally determined uh, concentration as well as the theoretically determined concentration, which means is that um, uh, this Px, x means the metallic uh, uh, ion concentration, Px versus activity of uh, if you try to plot uh, a graph, mm -hmm. then the slope actually becomes uh, the minus 0 0.592 divided by m. So this uh, theoretical, this is said to be theoretical value and experimental you can determine the uh, activities and both actually when you try to compare and there is a huge difference between these two numbers. So this is another major drawback of uh, first kind the metallic indicators and despite of all these problems there are several uh, first kind electrodes have been developed. For example, uh, silver electrode is uh, developed for detecting the silver ions, likewise a mercury electrode metallic indicator for uh, mercury ions in neutral solutions, copper, uh, zinc, cadmium and uh, bismuth, you know, thallium and then lead all those things uh, uh, we can have the electrodes in uh, deaerated solutions. The first kind of metallic indicators, the second kind uh, metallic indicators only work for the anion uh, activity, I mean to determine the anion uh, concentration in a given unknown solution. For example, you just imagine a reaction a redox reaction, silver chloride uh, by taking one electron it gives you the silver uh, zero and uh, uh, chloride minus uh, ions and uh, this reaction happens only when you apply this much uh, potential and we can apply uh, the Nernst equation to this uh, redox reaction and we can write like uh, the 0 0.222 to minus 0 0.0592 divided by 2 logarithmic Log, log of uh, activity of chloride ion. Uh, again that since uh, the silver is a solid so we don't uh, take its activity and it is taken to be activity of uh, any solid and the liquid is taken to be 1. And then slightly we can modify this expression and the uh, E indicator is equal to 0 0.222 plus 0 0.0592 PCL that means this is the activity of the chloride minus ion. Another example is that mercury electrode. So mercury electrode we can develop uh, and it will it can be nicely uh, used as uh, indi met uh, metallic indicator for detecting the EDTA concentration. Okay, uh, uh, You know that the uh, EDTA forms uh, uh, metal complexes with various uh, metals. And the redox reaction is represented like this. So the mercury uh, forms a complex here. It is shown like this, and uh, it, by taking it two electrons, it will undergo this dissociation uh, only when you apply this much uh, potential. So we can apply again the Nernst equation to this, and uh, we can uh, 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 derive a small expression where in, uh, the indicator electrode potential is directly proportional to the uh, concentration of uh, concentration or the activity of uh, EDTA anion. Please remember that the mercury electrode is slightly uh, it is totally different from the calomel electrode which we have discussed in the last class. In the case of a calomel electrode mercury zero is in contact with the mercury ion is in contact with the uh, chloride, chloride ion and the standard uh, mercury 
potential actually directly proportional to the 1 over uh, chloride ion whereas in the case of uh, mercury electrode which we discussed just now uh, the uh, redox potential of the uh, mercury directly proportional to 1 over uh, uh, ethylene diamond tetraesteric uh, anion and uh, this is a useful reaction for locating the end points because you know uh, the indicator electrode potential as you can see from this uh, small uh, expression that we have derived here uh, it is directly proportional to the anion ty y actually stands for the uh, edta anion so for different concentrations of the edta anion you can have different potential cell potential so that means by knowing the by measuring the indicator electrode potential we can determine this so this is how the uh, second uh, kind of metallic indicator works so these are only specific for uh, anions metallic indicator uh, a metallic indicator which is specifically designed for detecting a metal ion concentration can perhaps be made use uh, full for detecting the concentration of some other cations for example in the previous example the mercury electrode can be used for detecting the edta anion concentration so this particular mercury electrode uh, can perhaps be used for determining the uh, calcium ion concentration how it can be done so in the previous reaction uh, previous example i have mentioned that mercury complex actually takes two electrons and then it will uh, uh, undergo this equilibrium redox reaction and the the uh, the electrode potential is uh, 0 0.0 to 1 volt so in the reaction what we can do we can just add little bit of a calcium edta complex okay so when you add this one this calcium edta complex actually uh, undergo this equilibrium and one can uh, undergo this uh, dissociation and we can write down a small uh, dissociation um, constant uh, activity of uh, calcium uh, multiplied by the activity of uh, EDTA divided by the activity of uh, uh, concentration of the uh, calcium EDTA complex. So we can, so this particular uh, thing we can uh, uh, extend and we can uh, derive a small expression for the uh, where we can get a relation between the indicator electrode potential versus uh, and the calcium ion concentration. Uh, so the procedure is given here and then the first we have to apply the Nernst equation to the mercury electrode. This is uh, I have discussed in the second kind metallic indicator and then ultimately you know since uh, these all things are uh, constant uh, so we have uh, replaced k minus 0 0.592 divided by 2 into logarithmic value of the activity of EDTA ions. That is, that is where we have stopped in the second kind electrode. But since uh, we have uh, added here a calcium EDTA complex, so from the dissociation constant uh, from here, we can obtain a relation between uh, a relation for uh, a activity of uh, EDTA anions and then so this is a log A by B and you can expand like this and you will get uh, two terms and again if you look into this uh, this entire thing is a constant and you can replace with another constant K dash and then uh, you will get here log of 1 over uh, activity of uh, calcium 2 plus ions so which we can uh, replace with a shorthand notation PCA that means it is the activity of uh, uh, calcium uh, ion concentration that means uh, originally it is designed for mercury electrode is uh, originally designed for detecting the EDT anion concentration but for uh, by adding little bit of uh, uh, calcium EDT complex to the solution then we have made uh, in, uh, a small we, we can actually determining a nice relation between the indicator electrode potential and the concentration of the uh, calcium that means you can actually if you uh, you can actually determine the concentration of the calcium metallic redox indicators there are certain metallic indicators are there for example platinum gold and palladium and these uh, 
also serve as an indicator electrode for uh, certain red uh, oxidation and redox uh, reactions. So these electrode acts as a source or sink for electron transfer from uh, redox systems uh, to the metallic indicator system. For example, uh, uh, cerium 3 plus detection by platinum electrode. The potential of the solution containing uh, cerium 3 and uh, the cerium 4 is given by this redox uh, reaction and we can apply the Nernst equation and then from here uh, by detect by uh, measuring the indicator electrode potential we can estimate the concentration of uh, what is uh, percent uh, either it is a cerium 3 plus or cerium 4 plus can be estimated. However, these uh, particular uh, metallic redox indicator has uh, major problems for example since the electron transfer process is uh, taking place at the inner electrode and uh, you know that most uh, most of the cases these uh, uh, reactions uh, are not uh, reversible therefore the metallic indicators uh, what we originally prepared uh, undergo some kind of uh, chemical reactions and uh, they will not last for longer time and another thing is that uh, they do not respond as we expect uh, the half reaction from the electrochemical series.